Hi, welcome to Island Time Art Design. Today I'm going to talk about how I reuse my poor painting paint to make other canvases, to make other paintings. Um, I'm going to talk about some products today and I'm also going to show you some end products. So sit back, relax, you're on Island Time now. So we're going to recycle paints from pour painting and to do that you need to have a drip tray. So I, I used to use like this baker's tray and it's got a nice edge on it. Um, let's see if I can show you. There's there's a there's a, about a one inch lip maybe maybe a, it's just like a jelly roll pan so it's like maybe a three quarter inch lip on it and and this was a good size too. I'm trying to get this in the frame here. There we go. So um, this is a good size. It's it's it probably says on the back of it, 18 by 13. And uh, it's good for a starter. You know, I, I had it in my cupboard and I just uh, decided to try with this, with the little 10 by 10 uh, canvases. It worked out pretty well. And then I kind of grew to a little bit bigger, more, uh, more exciting projects. So um, I, I did start with this. I used to throw my paint away. The, the problem with this pan, it's metal. It's not plastic. So the paint, I had to like wipe it down each time and I never, I never reused my paint. So I went to a different system where I'm now using a boot mat. This is just uh, something that you would come in from outside and you would leave your boots in it and it would collect your snow or, or mud or whatever. And it works great for pore painting. So um, again, it's got the, it's got the, the thick lip. It's, it's maybe a little bit thicker, maybe about one inch tall. And what I like about this is that I can set my painting, my canvas, hold on a second. Let me get you a canvas, bigger canvas, big canvas. I can set my canvas all the way across this boot mat, if you can see that. Let me see. Ah! So it can actually hold my canvas up on two sides. And that means that all that paint drips into the boot mat, which is plastic, and I can use that boot mat as a, as a collector of my recycled paints. So what I do with this is I put a strip of um, paper towel on both the front and the back of it. So I'm going to lose a little bit of paint on that paper towel, but the majority is going to fall right into this, into this mat. So to collect the paint, you're going to tilt into one corner and collect it into a, a vessel of some kind. And then when you're done with collecting the paint, the, the easiest way to reuse this is to take your gloved hands and smear all the paint over the entire area. Get it very well coated so that it's all pretty much one piece of dried vinyl. At the end, the paint turns into a vinyl product. And that way, you can just let it dry for about a couple of days and then just peel it off. It's gonna peel off in, in just one or two or just, just a few sheets and it's very easy to do, very easy to get it clean and back to the original condition. Um, this, this one I didn't actually, um, I forgot that step. And so you'll see I have just a thin layer of paint right here. When I use this again for new paintings, I'm going to do that. I'm gonna do that step and make sure it's all even. It will pick up all this old paint. It'll get all of it up when I, when I do the next peel. So it's really easy to use. There's no debris left over that co can collect in your paint that you're, you're going to re recycle. And it, it makes the tray reusable. It makes the paint reusable. That I can do very large canvases. This is a 16 by 20 canvas and it will actually hold that canvas up on, on both edges on the short side. So all I need is a strip of paper towel on, on the front end and the back end. All my, most all of my paint is gonna drip into my drip pan and then I can recycle that. So if I were to use a smaller canvas that isn't quite this size, if I were to use a smaller canvas like this, this is a 12 by 12, I can use other items. For example, I found these th thumbtacks, the push pins, push pins. So I found this idea from another artist who uses these push pins 
and they're large, they're jumbos. And again, this is gonna be in a link um, below if you wanna purchase these, because these are hard to find. So I did, I did give you a link to these. So these push pins are really big. They're about the size of my thumb. And what you do is you put them in four corners on the backside before you start to paint. So the, the, the pros of using these push pins is that they will stay with your painting. So you do your flips, your turns, your flops, and you can set it back down and these stay right with it. You don't have any problems. Um, you can take this, this painting that you've got, you can move it to your drying shelf and the push pins stay right there. So you don't have to worry. As long as your surfaces are, are level where you're working and where you're drying, the, these work really great. There's also a product called a painter's tripod. I have a link below also if you want to purchase these. Um, these, these items, these, these are neat. Uh, they're kind of cool, but when you're doing your tilting, when you're tilting, and, and especially for big canvases, it's hard to find that edge to set it on. When you're looking above the canvas, looking down, it, it, it is hard when these are on your on your, um, your boot mat or your drip tray. It's, it's a little bit hard to position that when you've got a very large canvas to work with. So these are cool. Um, I use these mostly for drying my paintings. So after I'm done doing my tilting, after everything's comp composed how I like it, I, I do put these on my drying shelves to dry e even more paintings that way. The, the problem with the push pins is that there's only 12 of them. So for four per, you know, for the four corners, you really can only do three paintings at a time with these because they're they're pushed up against the painting. You can remove them while your painting's wet after you've done a tilt, but it's it's uh, you're you're risking touching the sides of your painting. So so I I use these. I put them on my first three paintings, for example, and then I move on to different things. Um, one thing I really like, so since we're talking about recycling, is I use orange juice jug lids. So it's just an orange juice jug. It's got a really nice thickness to this lid and it's really wide diameter. So I put four of these down in my boot mat, set the painting on top of it so that when I do my, my tips and tilts and turns, I can find that, that orange juice lid very easily to set my wet painting down and then pick it up again or do what I wanna do. Um, just ensure that if you're going to use lids, that when that paint collects on the lid, you're gonna do your you're gonna do your scrape on the bottom side of the of your painting to scrape it as it's setting as it's setting level. So let me show you. So you're gonna you're gonna scrape the excess paint off of each off of each side, and, and if this lid is there, you want to make sure that that gets um, that that doesn't puddle because if that puddles too high, it's gonna go up on the edge of your painting and may not have the look you're looking for so so just have that caution but they are free they you know you already own them so it works out really nice i use these probably most more than anything so why are why are we collecting this paint so here's a couple examples of paint that i've collected and i call them trash paint when i'm working i just call it trash paint but it's not trash that do not throw your paint away it's reusable um, these are two colors. This is, this is paint that I collected it, and I collected this much paint after painting one day and I collect it in the boot, in the boot mat. So that's a lot of paint to be, to be reused later. And that's a pretty color. If, if, if you, if you take all your paint from your collection, you know, pan, that's, that's a, I don't know if you can see this. That's a really nice. Um, it, it's hard to see in the camera there. This is a really nice slate blue, like it's a, um, a nautical blue and beautiful color. Um, but all you do is, is you, you collect everything in your, in your tray, right? So another, another good use for this orange juice jug, oops, that orange juice jug is I took the top of it. I mean, I'm sorry, the bottom of it. I took the bottom off. What do you got? When you take the bottom off, you get a funnel. That's a, that's a funnel, it's a funnel. So if I put the lid back on, and then I take the paint after I'm, I'm done, I'm done working all day long, I made my paintings. I got all this paint in here. All I have to do is tilt it, 
and put this funnel underneath, keep the lid on, set the, set the whole thing down on your work surface so you don't have to hold it. With that lid on, you only have to hold it with one hand and it's all gonna, it's all gonna drip down to one corner and you're gonna collect that beautiful, beautiful paint. And you're gonna be surprised at the colors that this stuff turned. You know, I didn't go to in my mind to create this color of, of green, but it's a beautiful color and this color, this color of a slate blue, but it's a beautiful color. So sometimes you get some really fantastic colors from what's what's a blend of your your your, uh, your recycled paint for the day. And um, the, just just so it's very clear, I shake these up. So I take all the colors in my mat and I give it a good shake and that's the color I end up with in the bottle. So can you use anything else? Um, can you recycle anything? We, I could go on for, for days talking about what you can recycle, but I'm gonna just cover a couple of things because um, when we talk about containing our paints, these are paint mixtures. So it's it's your paint, your acrylic paint, plus your Floetrol, plus your oil or whatever, what are you, whatever you've been painting with. Um, but these bottles, they have a cost to them. So I like to not spend money on bottles and things like that. I like to spend money on the paint, the, the canvas, the paint, the things that I have to purchase. Um, so if I don't have to purchase it, I like to reuse and recycle. So um, while, while these are really nice because they have the tip on them and you can really be specific where you want to put your paint, there's other, there's other ways to mix paint and store paint. And one thing I, I did, you know, I was hovering over the trash can and I was like, should I throw this in the trash? And I, you know, cause my goodness sakes, it's got such a nice pour lid on, look at that. It's, it's like, it's made for pour painters, that lid right there. So I thought, I wonder if I should save this. And then I thought, at what point do I become a hoarder? I'm not there yet. My husband says I am, I am not a hoarder yet because I'm going to use this. So, um, I mixed up some paint here here's here's a creamer bottle with paint mixed up in it it's still good paint it's been there for a couple months it's still good it's, it's shooken up ready to go and and not only that this is a much larger size so this cost me money this was free and when I make a pretty color that I really love I want more of it I don't I don't want this much because I'll go through that in a few paintings you know depending on what I'm gonna how much contrast and stuff but I like to make up a lot of a pretty color so that I don't have to stir and everything. And I know there's a lot of painters uh, painting videos where the, you know, they're stirring their paints and stuff and they're teaching you how to mix, mix your paints and stuff. But I don't like to stir paint anymore. I like to, I like to practice with the, the techniques and, and see what I can do. And um, I like to get my paints as, mixed up as fast as possible and that's what a bottle is for. So. Um, you could do the stir cups, you could shake things up in a bottle. Um, I like to have my bottles of not just paint with another paint to get a color. I like it to have paint and flow troll and everything ready to go, the right consistency so that I can just grab a bottle and start to paint. So that's what these do, they, they give me more paint. So if, if I could do that with these bottles, I thought, well, what else What else could I keep? What else could I hoard? Well, then, you know, you know here's a Gatorade jug. That's bigger, right? Is bigger better? I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. But one of the concerns I might have with something of this size is maybe it gets more air into it, maybe it affects the paint sooner. If I'm not gonna use that much paint right away, I may not use this, but you know, some colors you use a lot, like white, you might use a lot of white, so that might be a good one for your whites. Um, I, I would just say to keep it, if you're not sure if it's gonna stay airtight and, um, it keep the consistency of the paint really well. You could also put a piece of plastic wrap over it and then screw your lid on because that's going to keep it um, airtight or more airtight. So then I thought, well, what else could I use? Well, here's mustard container and it's got a nice little pour spout. Mustard container. Here is a soft soap container, another nice pour spout. Um, so pretty much anything you could get the lid off if it's a plastic container. Um, clear, clear plastic's good because then you know what color you've got. This one may not work. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. This is a vitamin container. It's, it's a nice big vitamin container. I guess what got my attention was the pore spout. Check that out. Check that out. Yeah. So 
that's that's uh, some of the things you can recycle. I'll, I'll probably have other videos that will talk more about materials that I've used for recycling. But that, but that's uh, it gets you an idea of, of how to save the paint, how to um, store the paint, uh, shake shake up the paint, get your colors. Um, I do want to also talk about house paint because a lot of people use a little bit uh, house that they'll use their house paint and then they'll always have that one can left that they don't they don't need maybe the people moved away and you, they changed the paint color for the house but i wanted to say that here here's a big jug of uh, one gallon of interior or exterior this one's exterior house paint as long as it's acrylic you can use it for acrylic pour painting it does not have to be artist grade um, purchased at the local art store you could use exterior house paint you could use interior house paint satin gloss any of that you have to decide what as an artist what you want your painting to look like but this this works it, it, you can use it the same way you use other paints you add your flow troll you, you do what you want with it you get your consistency right um, in fact this one here this is this house paint it's got some flow troll in it and uh, the only thing I'd caution you about is sometimes house paint will dry faster um, flow troll will help to slow down that but you want to uh, you want to make sure that your your paint is of equal consistency um, I've had a painting that I'm going to show you so this this was a painting that I did it was a Dutch pour and as you might know with Dutch pour the the paint is is a lot more um uh thinner it's got more flow troll than paint in it or it's got a higher concentration of flow troll in it so so that it, it blows with the with the blow dryer um so it, it this one blew out really nice um over here in the corner and i don't know if you can even you, you might not even be able to tell because i but i'm the artist so i know that it's there uh there was a little bit of problem going on in this corner and I, t I think it I think it was dust or some something got into it so I took a little knife and I got the the dust specks out you know a little putty knife and I used the paint the house paint to go back over that corner and it didn't dry quite right so you can let me see if you can see that the, see there's a little uneven edge on that corner so it did dry at different rates um, typically I have not found a good way to touch up a painting um, without it having those kind of dry problems so maybe the house paint has no problems maybe it's just the artist in this particular case but um, just kind of uh, pay attention to your dry time with your house paint what you could do is is mix the house paint with other paints and it would probably resolve that problem I do also want to mention another really good thing with these trash paints is is as your as you're tilting and turning your paints, I'm just going to use this as an example. There we go. Um, you know, sometimes you do your flip cup and you do your tilt and you're like, oh man, I, I really love how this painting is going, but I didn't have enough paint. And if I tilt this anymore to, to get to these corners that I didn't get to, it's going to ruin my composition. So you have, you have some trash paint. On, always on the hand. You, you, this is mixed with flow troll. It doesn't matter what color it is. You get some paint on that corner. It helps pull your your um, your 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 good paint. It helps it um, be more fluid so that it gets your good paint to the edge. And this stuff falls right off the edge. You know, and I've seen. I know you you guys know how to do this, but but you you can use it as a um, a discard paint. I'm going to call it discard paint. A sacrificial paint. Um, where it just helps everything flow better. Um, you wouldn't intend for that to happen, but sometimes you you just you you realize you're not going to have coverage somewhere, and you you slap some paint on it just so that it gets the movement, the flow, the fluidness of that of that paint. So another good reason, ha and I've done that many times. I'm, I many times I've underestimated how much paint it takes to do a canvas, and I, I will grab whatever I have around me just to get that flowing. So now I'm going to show you some of my my paintings that I've made with trash paints. You can see that you could get some really good colors going on and 
there, at no extra cost. You've already used the paint. You don't have to buy more paint. You can use paint that you've collected. Okay, so here is one of my paintings that I made with trash paint, um, recycled paint. And the colors that I used with this one are, there's a, uh, there's a, a, a pinkish color here. This is really hard to show you with the glare, but there's, there's this pretty pink color in here and there's a lot of blues in here. And this is something that I just put together. I didn't really have an idea in mind about the composition, but it, it's really simple to um, grab a couple bottles when you feel inspired and, and just see what comes out at the end. I've also got a couple paintings that were uh, made with the grays and blues. Um, the good thing about uh, grays, you know, a lot of colors mixed together make gray, but grays cr create quite a nice contrast. So you've got some I've got some blacks in here and some, uh, I, th I think other than the black and the white, the pure colors, everything else was from different trash paints of uh, maybe colors that go well together, like my my gr green grays and my, my greener greens. Um, there's some copper going on in there. This one also, I did a lot of greens and blues this day. And these these were all trash paints used for this painting. So you can see there, there's a lot of different, lot, lot, lot going on in, the, in this painting here. And it's all from just several bottles of different trash paint colors. Um, I was looking for, uh, yeah, I happen to have a gray, a really dark gray right here. This, these dark lines here, they were um, just mixed together from one day's work I, it, it turned out to be a very dark color so I thought well what what color could I put with a dark gray to make a, a beautiful composition I thought well maybe some yellows and, and um, it, the, the gray was actually a combination of purple colors so the the purple went really well with with the other purples in here because it's just a very just a, it's just a very dark purple um, but I, I got a lot of compliments on this painting here um, which is uh, just using trash paint and um, the gold and and I added some fresh purples but I can show you here um, the, the the gold is actually yellow I believe it wasn't actually gold paint but that was uh, another idea that I had for the dark and light contrast this is a similar painting it's a ring pour painting and Again, you know, I was working with purples that day. I was working with blues and greens that day. And so you can come up with very um, different designs depending on what you're looking for. But I like a lot of contrast and there's quite, quite a bit of contrast in here. Uh, I just added maybe some white to create some different definition between the rings. Um, but this was, other than the white, this was all created with trash paint. And this, this one here had a lot thicker paint, so you can see that the cells really popped up in these, but this was about uh, four different colors. I think this was a kiss pour. I'll, I'll show you the bigger picture here. So I, I had one cup with, with two colors of aqua, and then another cup with um, the, the grays and the blues. And I, I guess maybe the aqua had the white in it. And, and you got some really good strong cells off of this one. As you can see there, there's some, some beautiful cells going on. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time.